Welcome to tutorial 4. Uh, this is part 2 of tutorial 4 where we'll continue doing some coding. Um, previously to this point we've given um, Membo here some coding in his events area that makes sure that he will move to the right or the left whenever it's pressed. Now what I'm going to do at the moment is I'm actually going to import some stuff that I want into the game. Um, into this game I'm going to have some enemies which are going to be monkeys and Mambo is going to throw fruit as weapons. So to do that we use this import button. So what I'm going to do is import, I need to go to the area that I've saved these in. So now essentially these actor types are just um, images but I've saved them in my developer folder where I've created myself a stencil folder and the initial bullet that I'm going to use for Membo will be a line and we've got that here. Um, we come across to the properties um, we go and have a look at the group. Now I've included this group called fruit um, Okay, uh, and I edited the group. You can see Fruit is a um, version of a group that I've created because of the little people over the side here. I've decided that it collides with enemies, it'll collide with tiles, um, we won't make it collide with actors or players sort of thing, so it won't hit friendly fire sort of stuff, uh, and won't collide with other Fruit either. So we simply have that in the groups and you can always go back and have a look at those settings by going to the settings button, going down to the groups and there it is. Okay, so we've got our lime. So our lime is the basic weapon of Mambo. Uh, okay, physics. We're not going to have it affected by gravity. Okay. Now, collisions sits just around the, the bullet itself, which is fine. So that's as, as small as we can do. We've got no events for it, no behaviours, and its appearance is set out by the um, PNG that we set. And you can see over here the animation that that produces. Okay, so I'm going to import next another portion, which is in exactly the same folder. And it'll be my pineapple. Okay, so my pineapple rotates, you can see. Um, come across to the properties, part of fruit. I'll give it the description of the pineapple as the upgrade weapon. Or the more powerful weapon. Okay, and everything else should be right. And the last thing is I'll import an enemy image which is in the same folder okay so we have those there we go to his properties and we he's in the enemies group so okay so we save that and all of our guys are now in there. We go to our dashboard, open up our scene which currently only has Mambo on it. Okay and what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some monkeys. Remember shift clicking locks them to a grid so you can get them nice and even. And I'll have some monkeys along the top of our screen for Mambo to shoot once we get there, but essentially remember our problem with Mambo, so if we test this scene now there it goes, now we can move Mambo left and right but we can still take him off the edge of the screen and we can't get him back, once he goes he's gone so we need to add some more uh, behaviours to Mambo, so we'll come along here have a look at the events, now we've got an updated that moves left and right, now we need to add another event that is when updating again, so when we're drawing in, etc. Um, we need to then think about this screen 
as we covered in tutorial 3, uh, it's X and Y position. Um, so we need to have a look at our actor and we look at our position, but we need an if statement first. So we need to say if our position is somewhere, okay, we need to stop, some, stop that from going over the edge of the screen essentially. So go to our thing and we go here and we need to make a comparison to the X value of ourself. X is the one that goes left and right. So we need to, to start off with, say that if the X of ourself, okay, is less than zero. So zero is the leftmost portion of the screen, if you can remember. So if the X of the self is less than zero, we don't want that to occur. So what we want to do is we want to set the X to 1 for ourself. So that means we'll stop at 1 pixel. We can never go to the 0 pixel. Every time it tries to push into the 0 pixel, this activity or this event will actually catch it and set your X to 1, stopping you from continuing on. So that handles the left-hand side of the screen. The next portion we want to do is handle the right-hand side of the screen, which is slightly more complicated, but still not too bad. So we need another flow, and we need an otherwise if. Okay, so that's checking if our X is off the left. We need this one to check if our X is going off the right-hand side of the screen. So this one, as I mentioned, was a little bit more complicated. It's a comparison, and we need a greater than, obviously. And in here, we need something minus something. So what we've got here, we need to have a look at the actor again. If our X of self is greater than the screen width. So what we actually need is to find something that gives us our screen width. So let's have a look under here, just a quick look. I can't oh, width of no, can't find it there. So I'll put in here screen width and the search. Okay, so search results have found it, and so it'll be in the scene or the game, possibly the game, I don't know. But what we need is that in there. So, what we want to do then is then have the width of ourself, okay? So the screen width is the furthest right portion, but the X value of our actor, so if we go and have a look at Mambo himself, we'll have a look at his appearance. The X of Mambo is actually the, of zero, is actually the leftmost position. So when it says that the X value is at the screen width, already Mambo's off the screen because it's actually pointing at this left hand side. So we need to minus this width of our cells from this event. So under actor we will find position motion properties. Width of self, here we are. Okay, minus the width of self. And if that's the case, then we need to do some more setting of X. Okay, so we set X to the screen width minus width of self minus 1. So essentially this, which we can copy and should be able to paste that in here. Minus width of self minus one. So we actually need to turn this into another math version where we have an extra space. So you can see you can drill down and add bits and pieces. Minus one. Okay. So we save the game, which saves that portion of it, and we can test the scene now. Now what that should do is stop Mambo from going over the left-hand side of the screen or over the right-hand side of the screen. So we'll start with the right for a bit of suspense because it takes us longer to get there. And you can see we stop automatically with one pixel remaining. Okay, if we go to the left, again, it stops you. Okay, so that's tutorial for part two. 
We've imported some things. We've made sure that Mambo is now bound to be on screen completely. Um, in the next uh, section, we will actually show you how to start shooting bullets at uh, the monkeys, um, which is a bit more complicated. But really, what you should be getting for the, from tutorial four is the idea that you can go through all of these sections over to the right hand side, click, find different bits of people, pieces that you need to create your game. You need to actually think about the logic. I'm not really going into a lot about how the logic I came to is through this, but essentially um, it's just really working out what you need to do on paper first or having a really good think about what you're doing and applying that into an event or a behaviour. Thanks for watching and hopefully we'll catch up in the next tutorial.